Thank you very much. Here we are on location in Carnelian Bay. I am with Beth Moxley, owner of Rockwood Tree Service. How are you? I'm doing great, Kristen. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, thank you for having us out on this project today. You've taken down several trees here. Uh, tell people what's going on. Well, these trees died from the fir and graver bark beetle, mm -hmm. such as the trees still standing in the, in the background. Oh, yeah. The bark beetle does kill the tree, and the best thing to do is to get the trees down as soon as possible and get the wood out of there. We take it directly to the dump so as not to take firewood or wood to a property that does not have the fur engraver bark beetle in the property and infest the uh, remaining furs, the healthy furs. So this is like a, it's like a science, almost like doing surgery, you know, cleaning the utensils afterwards and, and that kind of thing. Uh, on forward. We refer to it as tree biology. Yeah. It is it is a biology. Uh, there's a lot of different changes and a lot of different things going on in arboriculture. It changes yearly. So we're always trying to continue our education and continue educated on all the different effects and issues going on in the basin. The trees are stressed due to the four-year drought. It all starts with the drought. So we had a four-year drought which weakened all the trees and mm -hmm. made them susceptible for the bark beetle, the dwarf mistletoe, the blister rust. When the trees are weakened, then it makes them susceptible for attack by all of the different things that may come in and kill the trees. So that's what's happening. So you're in here taking down disease trees, and yet you are able to diagnose those because you're an arborist, certified arborist. That's pretty rare up here in Tahoe. Yes, it is a, a two-year education. I have a background in farming from South Dakota, so I've always been fascinated in how things grow. So when I came to the Tahoe Basin, of course, like many other people, we love the forest. Right. So I fell in love with the forest, and I fell in love with the trees, and I wanted to learn as much as I could about the trees and how to maintain a healthy forest. Lake Tahoe is an international jewel. People from all over the world come to visit Lake Tahoe. We have a responsibility to be caretakers of the forest for generations to come. You do a fantastic job at that, of being able to diagnose these sick trees, and dead and dying trees, and to be able to help homeowners and the forest be able to live healthfully, healthy. Yes, uh, we all have an obligation, really, yeah. to maintain a healthy forest, whether it be your own property or uh, surrounding neighborhoods. A lot of second homeowners may not be aware that they have diseased trees on their property. So it's up to us to educate not only the homeowners that are full-time residents, but also second homeowners that may not be up here as often as they would like to be. For sure. Well, you're looking at this thing. We're, we're looking at this sugar pine right now. It doesn't look like it's dying, but it is. Tell me a little bit about that. The sugar pine is under attack by the blister rust, and that's evident with the a huge amounts of pitching out that you can see glistening on the ends of the cones. So although it still is green, you'll see fanning throughout the crown of the tree, which is dieback, dead limbs, and you'll also see a huge amount of pitching from the blister rust. So unfortunately with the sugar pines, that's incurable. With the furs, we can fight the bark beetle. Uh, with micro-injections, insecticides, and a lot of different other things that we're trying to do to save the furs. Fascinating information. I, d I love talking to you. It's so interesting. You. How can people get more information um, or have you come out to their property? Do you to go to, out to people's property and look around? Yes, yes, we do. I actually go out and do arborist assessments, just initial assessments. If they would like a full report, obviously it starts with identifying the species. You don't treat a sugar pine like you would a fir mm -hmm. or a Jeffrey like you would a cedar. So the first thing you want to do is identify the species and then approach that species in the way that we've learned through research and history and how to best protect that tree and treat that tree. Fascinating information. Thank you so much for being with us today. Beth Moxley here of Rockwood Tree Service. We're up here in Carnelian Bay. I'm going to send it back to you in the South Shore.